I am Michael Pearl sitting here at the door answering your Bible questions. And by the way, for those of you looking on, I do have more than one, one shirt. I don't wear the same shirt every week. But my wife got a deal on a bunch of shirts that were just alike. And she said that she read where old people have a lot of decisions to make and it gives them Alzheimer's. And so she didn't want me to be troubled with making a lot of decisions about what to wear. So the shirts are all alike. I don't have to look. Just close my eyes, reach in. Oh, yeah, great, great. I'll wear gray today. So that's why I have the same shirt on. I, I, do, I do wash them. All right. Here's a question. I saw a YouTube sermon video that was about a man who had a near-death experience and saw lukewarm Christians who went to hell for their sins that they had not repented of. They said it was due to not, a, to not abandoning willful sin. So that's what they saw in the dream, that Christians who were, had sins they didn't confess to God. They were still committing a sin, hadn't confessed it to God. They died with unconfessed sin. And so they went to hell. What do you say about this idea? Read my lips. Stupid. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> uh, this was obviously somebody working their way to heaven. Let me ask, if I were talking to the guy who said that, okay, I'd say, first of all, man, you got this while you was dead. How are we, <laughs> we going to believe it? <laughs> are we going to trust in that? I got a Bible that teaches me. I don't need to talk to somebody that was dead for 15, 20 seconds on the operating table. And furthermore, I think you're lying. I don't believe you saw this when you're dead. If you did, then the devil gave you that vision. You didn't get it from God. Now, there's a scriptural answer for that. Uh, 1 Corinthians 5, 5. Here's what, okay, here's what I'd say to the guy if, if somebody said that to me. Said to me that if you die with unrepented sins, you'll be lost. I'd ask him, when you got saved, did you repent from all your sins? Yeah. Well, since you got saved, have you ever discovered something in your life that's sin that you didn't know was sin when you got saved? Yeah then you really weren't saved until you found out about that unrepentant sin and repent of it 10 years after you supposedly got saved, right? Well, no. It long, if you don't know that it's sin, no, wait a minute. You tell me that if you don't know it's sin, it's okay to have it. It's just unrepented sin that you know about. Well, yeah. Uh, let me ask you, do you ever experience any pride? Do you ever, are you dishonest? Do you ever, ever cheat? Dis are you, do you ever get angry at your wife or your kids? What would your wife say if I asked you? Do you have any sins that you've not repented of? Has there ever been a moment in your life when you didn't have any sins? All sins were repented of. You were perfectly pure before God. Uh, what part of the time are you actually saved and what part of the time are you lost? You know, I mean, it's a pretty confusing doctrine to think that your salvation depends on you repenting of all your sins. See, Jesus came to save sinners, and he saves sinners. Now, here's what it says, 1 Corinthians 5, 5. Paul wrote to the church at Corinth. They had a Christian in the church at Corinth whose daddy had gone on a trip somewhere. Uh, her daddy had married again and probably maybe had a younger wife or something. And so this young man shacks up with his stepmother. And the church got all upset about it, it got bitter. Paul wrote to them and told them to do this, deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Paul told the church to turn that sinning Christian, adulterous Christian, over to Satan so Satan could destroy his body, could kill him. And that, that's like a reverse casting out devil's cer ceremony. It is casting the devil in. It's getting together and praying, Satan, we're talking to you now. You can have this man. We don't want him anymore. He's not part of our body. You can kill him. Take him. And then they sit back and wait on him to die. So that'd be a horrible thing to do. We've done that a couple times in the church. Deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that 
the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. In other words, this guy is going to die in sin and go to heaven. I didn't make that up. That's not once saved, always saved Bible doctrine. That's Bible doctrine. <laughs> That's what God says. John 5, 24, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation. Shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. When I got born again, I got born again forever. I got saved. I got in God's family. Now granted, the warnings in the Scripture that says I need to continue in the faith, I hate those warnings. The warnings that say if you depart, I'll take your name out of the book of life, I believe that. I don't want my name taken out of the book of life. So what do I do? I stay in the faith. I keep trusting Jesus. I'm not trusting my repentance from sin. And by the way, I don't commit willful sin. So I'm confident that uh, Jesus is in me and I'm in him and what he did is sufficient to get me into heaven. Now, here's another one in Romans 8, 29 through 35. Here it says, for whom he, God, did foreknow. That means like no beforehand. Whom he did foreknow, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. In other words, those whom God knew would be his children in his family. He predetermined that that group of people whom he foreknew would be conformed to be like his son Jesus. In other words, God had a design program for those who'd become his designed to be like Jesus. And th those whom he predestinated, them he also called. So there was a special calling for that predestinated to be conformed group. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. So look here, here's, here's this group. This is the whole group of those that he foreknow will be saved. The ones whose names were written down in the Lamb's Book of Life from before the foundation of the world because he knew they would be saved. He said, those whom he foreknow, foreknew, those he predestinated to be like Jesus. And those he predestinated to be like Jesus, he called them. No man could come to me except the Father draw him. So the Father drew them, them, called them. And those whom he called, he justified, paid in full, no more sin, took away their sin. Now what number got justified? Same number he foreknew. God's not so uh, out of touch that he would foreknow incorrectly. <laughs> he foreknows well enough he could write their name down ahead of time. Now, maybe some will get taken out, so their name was written, but it wasn't written. I mean, I don't understand that. So in the end, all whom he foreknew will be saved. And those who depart from the faith won't be. But then he foreknew they would depart from the faith. And so those, and then it goes on, and those whom he justified, them he also glorified. So the, what is this glorified? It's this group goes to heaven in a glorified state. So the same number he foreknew got predestinated, called, justified, and glorified. And he didn't lose any anywhere along the way. He kept them all. And then Hebrews 3, 6, and this is the other side of the story. But Christ as a son over his own house. Whose house are we if we hold fast the confidence and rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end? I can give you 20, 25 verses out of the New Testament that say that your salvation is conditioned upon you staying in the faith. Not being sinless, but staying in the faith. Continuing to trust in Jesus Christ and not denying him, not trampling underfoot the blood of the Son of God, but continuing to recognize your sinful state and your need for the Savior and continue to live in faith before him. That means you don't quit and become a Mormon or Jehovah's Witness. You then have your name taken out of the book of life. Or maybe it never was in. I don't know. But you wouldn't make it into heaven. And it means that you don't become a Buddhist or follow some atheistic or infidel philosophy. It means you stay in the faith of Jesus Christ. 
Then Hebrews 3.12 says this, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Notice it's not an evil heart in telling a lie or uh, looking at pornography or uh, cussing or taking a drink or getting high. Not those things are wrong, but it's, that's not what he said. Lest there be an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Every sin there is, some Christian has committed it at one time or another and re later repented or didn't repent as in 1 Corinthians and was killed. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold fast, hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. We are made partakers of Christ if, on the condition, that we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. So that means if you don't hold the beginning of your confidence steadfast unto the end, you're not a partaker of Christ. He didn't say we will be a partaker of Christ. It's not a reward at the end of a life of faithfulness that gets you to heaven. It's right now I am a partaker, and that will be revealed that I'm a partaker of Christ right now. If I hold fast the beginning of my confidence steadfast unto the end. If I don't hold fast the beginning of my confidence steadfast unto the end, it is a sign that I'm not really a partaker right now. I'm a fake. So there are lots of fake Christians in the world. Lots of, just like in Iraq, in Saudi Arabia, everybody's Muslim. But they're not all believers. They don't all believe the Muslim religion. They don't all practice it. Most of them don't know what it is. The majority of them have never read the Koran the first time, hadn't read a single line in it. Heard it quoted, but they've never read it. Never cared enough to read it. Just like in America, everybody's a Christian, or, you know, was at one time. But most people never read the Bible, don't know what's in it. Don't bother, don't care, don't really believe. A lot of people go to mosque, they're not believers. A lot of people go to church. They're Christians, but they're not believers. And there's some preachers that don't really believe. It's a vocation, it's a way of making a living. It helps them feel good about themselves. And so most Christians are not born again, spirit-filled children of God on their way to heaven. And they will fall into various sins, and many of them will deny the faith. None of them will make it in. So... That's the answer to that question.